So today what we're going to do is going to, we're going to wrap up our look at critical path analysis. So we're going to talk about today discussing delays. Now these are the excellence questions that you'll be asked. So it, they're going to give you a scenario and say, what would happen if task whatever was delayed by three hours? Or what would be the maximum amount I could delay task whatever without affecting another task? Okay, so these are what if questions, because as you know, everything you do has delays. And so we looked at float time to see how we could mitigate those delay delays a little bit. But now we're going to talk about what happens if they do, if there is a push, uh, you know, do we need more people? Is it going to affect the critical path? What's going to happen if this delay happens? And so you're going to see he's going to discuss two different types of delays, two different questions about delays. And from the papers that I've looked at in the past, from the past papers, these are fairly common questions. Actually, everything is fairly common questions. Like you needed the three, remember last time we needed three people working at the same time to stop and have the meeting? That's on every test I've seen, okay? So, so we're just gonna watch the video, pay close attention, and I'll stop it occasionally just to say, right, make sure you, Pay attention to this. This is really important, etc. All right, here we go. Pay attention because he talks funny. <laughs> if he talks at all, hold on. Okay, let's start over so that we can make sure we get it all. In our last video, we found the total of the free flow time for each part. And in this video, we're going to be answering the last two bullet points, which means including a discussion about the impact on the project that task B takes longer than six hours to complete, as well as discussing the impact of any other delay significant enough to extend the project's minimum completion time including the implications for start time for other tasks and the scheduling of the project view. This just means discussing the impact of delays on different aspects of the project. And to discuss these fully, we need to use our total flow and free flow time, as well as our network diagram and our GAN card. So it's everything we've done up to this point. We'll start off with task B as an example, as the second last bullet point is asking us to discuss that task specifically. As I said in my last video, Total float and free float times have a specific meaning behind them. For total float, it's the maximum amount of time that tasks completion can be delayed by without affecting the project's minimum completion time. So if we exceed that, obviously we're going to extend the project's completion time. This also has another side effect of creating a new critical path. We can see this by letting task D take 13 hours instead of 6 hours to complete, which means it's been delayed by 7 hours, exceeding the total float time. If we look along tasks A, C, G, I, and K, and add up their durations, we get 4 plus 3, which is 7, plus 13, which is 20, plus 2, which is 22, plus 3, which is 25 hours. 25 hours is longer than the project's minimum completion time, so we can see there that it succeeded it, but it also means that that is the new critical path of the project, which is an important point to discuss. Next, for free float, we can see that task G has a free float of three hours, meaning that if task G is delayed. Okay, let's talk about just, for just a moment what he said. So way back when, when we, desert, we decided that this was our critical path, we did so because it was the shortest distance to get everything done. So in other words, it was the longest time period. So we had the, it was the longest pathway of 24 hours. Now, by changing the number of hours it takes for G to get done, now this path takes 25 hours so that one that we had before would no longer be our critical path. So he was mentioning that those are the types of things you have to talk, talk, talk about. What is the effect of delaying it? And if it changes the critical path, and you can pretty much assume it will, otherwise stupid to talk about, right? If it changes the critical path, how 
and make sure that you know you mention that you know because it's it now it takes more hours to complete that path then that becomes our new critical path right which is going to affect everything else okay so think about ways to discuss that if i move that it's going to stop the date as a free for three hours meaning the s task is delayed by more than that it's going to start to delay other tasks beginning so this part of the assessment we'll have to say what task will be delayed the task b is a pretty obvious one task i is the only task which depends on task c meaning that if task b is delayed by more than this number then task i will also be delayed if you delay by more than six hours task k will be delayed as well but that's so important because that means that the project's minimum completion time will already be exceeded, so we don't need to worry about that. So in our answer to this bullet point, we're going to want to say something along the lines of Task D has a free float of three hours. If delayed by more than that, it will delay Task I. If delayed by more than six hours, it will create a new critical path of A, C, G, I, K. Okay, so let's talk about what, he's say, what his summary there. This is something you should probably write down or have somewhere, okay? Right, so they told you to, to delay task G, yes? And remember, it has a free float time of three hours. That means it's not gonna affect anything as long as it doesn't exceed three hours. But they want you to exceed it six hours. So he's mentioned the free float time, meaning the time that it could move around without affecting anything else. Then he's talking about if it's delayed more than that, so what does that float time mean? If it's delayed more than that, it will delay, and then you have to mention which task it will delay, in this case, just I, okay? And then if it's delayed by more than six hours, right, remember that's the total free float, the total float time, that, then it's gonna create a new critical path, and he's named that new critical path with each task. So you will need every piece of that to get your excellence, right? So the task, how much free float you have, what will happen after that, what task will be delayed, and if it's delayed by too much, the fact that it will create a new critical path and what would that critical path then be? Make sense? A lot of information, but it's packed into a small package. So you, it's a lot of different things you have to remember, and you need them all, but you can work on that. And I'm going to make you happy in just a minute. Really, really, really want to write this down. Really want to write it down. Here we go. Next, you're going to want to select a few other tasks to discuss. You don't have to do all of them, and while it will give you more opportunities to get excellent marks, it does take time, and it's more than necessary. It's still a good idea to get a good variety of total float and free float times with all the tasks that you do use. So moving on, we're going to use task I as well. We'll start off with total float time. If task I is delayed by more than three hours, then it will extend the project's minimum completion time. And by doing that, it will create a new critical path. This critical path is A, C, H, I, and K. And that's just because out of all the different paths task I is in, like A, C, D, I, K, A, C, H, I, K, and B, H, I, K, this one is the longest one. So what we'll say in our answer is if task I is delayed by more than three hours, it will create a new critical path of A, C, H, I, K. Remember that we don't have to discuss the impact of other tasks being delayed if the project minimum completion time has already been exceeded. Next up, we'll do task 8. Task 8 has a free float of 0 hours, meaning that if it's delayed at all, then it will delay other tasks in the project. And that task specifically is task I, because task I is the only task that depends on task 8's completion. After that, task 8's total float is 3 hours, meaning that if it's delayed by more than that, it is going to extend the project's minimum completion time, and a new critical path will be created of A, C, H, I, and K. So we'll answer something to that extent in our answer. Next up, we have task D. Task D has a free float and total float of 15 hours, meaning we'll just talk about the critical path, because delays on other tasks will no longer be a significant talking point. 
pretty obvious answer to this one. A task D is delayed by more than 15 hours and will extend the produce minimum completion time as well as creating a new critical path of A, D, and K. And we'll answer something like that in our answer. The final point we need to include in our discussion is the effect of any tasks being delayed on the scheduling of the progress review. These talking points can be very different from assessment to assessment and between different GAN charts as well as different specific times chosen for progress review. Because remember that even with this specific GAN chart, and this isn't the only correct one, there are six different possible review points where three different tasks were being carried out at the same time. Our one was specifically nine. Using our GAN chart and network diagram, you can see that tasks G and A both depend on task C. If task C is delayed by two hours, then task H and G won't begin until hour 10, which means that there will no longer be three tasks being carried out at the same time in hour 9, meaning that the progress review must be rescheduled. And this is a pretty big talking point which you can include in your discussion. So we'll write something along the lines of, if task C is delayed at all, it will extend the project's minimum completion time and delay the beginning of tasks E, F, J and K. So that's just discussing what we've already discussed about total flow and free flow times. Then we'll go on to say, if delayed by more than two hours, the progress review will have to be rescheduled, as three tasks will no longer be carried out at the same time. Okay, so did you see what he's talking about? Let me see if I can back it up just a tiny bit. Here you go. So he was talking about previous questions. Remember back when we looked at, and one of the questions was, when could, when could we have a, a meeting to review the project when three people are working and the, on a task at the same time? And we chose nine hours for that. And if you push it forward, then our time that we chose would not stay true. It wouldn't ha there wouldn't be three tasks happening. But you could have chosen a different time. Say, for example, you had said um, that, that was, you were going to do that uh, during hour 13. Right, which is the last possible hour that you could. If you move those forward to two hours, it wouldn't affect the fact that three things are still happening at the same time. Right? So again, your question is going to depend on which time you chose for each thing. Okay? So make sure you really know what you're talking about when you're talking about these. So again, everything that we've talked about has just been dealing with what would happen if things were delayed. And there were a lot of things, a lot of aspects that could happen when things are delayed. And he's going to kind of sum it up in just a moment. Here we go. As three tasks will no longer be carried out at the same time. Putting all these points together, your discussion is hopefully going to look something along the lines of this. Hello, and welcome to this video. I'm not going to hello and welcome. Let's just find that last three, slide. Three points together, your discussion. Now, so here's a, dis a discussion of all, <clears throat> all the things in this particular section. Now, remember, some of these are specific to this, this task. The question said specifically, um, asking about task G, if it was delayed more than six hours, your question might ask something different. Look at a different task and a different delay. Okay. Um, obviously, it could be something other than other than task I that is delayed by those that by those times, etc. And then the ones you choose. And sometimes, if you chose your timing for your for that uh, consultation to be a pro progress review to be to be done, like if you'd pick the end instead of the instead of the earliest times the end time might not be affected by moving some of those tasks, okay? But watch out if you, if you do need to have a new critical path and make sure you name it. Now, so that sums up everything we've done. So you've seen an example of everything that you're going to have to do for a critical path. We've been working on that practice one and working with, and working with that. I want you to... Look at those questions, the, the questions on delay today, and get some of those done. And between now and the assessment, which will be the second week of term three, you need to put together a single A4 page cheat sheet. You will not be allowed to look at the book or the videos. 
I thought it was going to be open book, but it's not. But they're going to allow you a one, one single page, A4 size cheat sheet. So whatever you need to do. So you might, some of you, that might be steps. What do you need to do? I need to do this first, this second, this whatever. And then you might talk, you might um, give some examples of the particular questions you want that, or uh, an example of what a uh, discussion of delays look like. You decide what needs to be on there, right? Definitions, terms, whatever. But it's totally up to you. And no, I will not be looking at your cheat sheet and saying, is this good, a good one or a bad one? This is completely up to you. Now you can work together. That's perfectly fine. But we're not supposed to help you develop it. Yes? Is it like a single-sided? Single-sided. Single-sided. Okay. And we will be looking at them. And, and if you come in here with something photocopied, I will f take it away from you. It has to be handwritten. Now, can, can five of you work together and write the same thing? That's fine. But it has to be handwritten. You cannot photocopy it. Can okay? you print it out? Pardon me? Print it out. Um, I don't know. That seems... <laughs> Seems a little like photocopying to me, but some of you, some of you can use computers when on a written thing. So if that's the case, then yes, if yours is printed out, that's fine. But if you don't have um, the thing about using a computer, then no. How's that? Okay. And if it is printed out, I don't want them to be identical to anybody else's. Okay. All right. So there we go.